Hi and welcome to Reviewing with Mrs. Wages. Today's topic is energy flow in the biosphere. This video addresses objective number one of my ecosystems test. Let's get started. Organisms are classified by how they obtain food. Heterotrophs cannot make their own food and must consume it instead. These include animals, fungi, and certain bacteria and protists. Because heterotrophs eat or absorb their nutrients from other sources, they're also known as consumers. You are a heterotroph. Autotrophs are those organisms that can make food, such as glucose, within their cells. Examples include plants, certain bacteria and protists, as well as algae. They have the cellular machinery that allows them to produce energy storing food molecules. This is why they're also known as producers. A common misconception is that autotrophs make energy. This is impossible as energy can neither be created nor destroyed. What they produce is food molecules that store energy. The energy storing food allows them to carry out life activities such as growth, development, and reproduction. You are probably most familiar with photosynthetic autotrophs. These are organisms, like plants, that use light energy to produce carbohydrates such as glucose in a process known as photosynthesis. These autotrophs live where light is available. Solar energy drives food production. Not all autotrophs live where there's light. Some live at the bottom of the ocean, for example, yet they still need food. Instead of harnessing light energy, these autotrophs harness chemical energy from inorganic molecules spewing out of hydrothermal vents, and this process is known as chemosynthesis. They still make glucose, they just do it using chemical energy instead of light. Certain deep sea bacteria are chemosynthetic autotrophs. Again, chemical energy drives their food production. This triangle shows a simple model of how organisms are organized into food chains within an ecosystem. The bottom trophic level, or feeding level, contains producers. If this were a land ecosystem, the producers would include plants that make their food via photosynthesis. All levels above this are consumers, or heterotrophs. The primary consumers are typically herbivores, while the secondary and tertiary consumers could be carnivores or omnivores, depending on the ecosystem. What are ecological pyramids? Well, these are models, often shaped like a triangle or a pyramid, that show the feeding relationships between the organisms living within an ecosystem. One such pyramid is a pyramid of biomass. These show the amount of living material or biomass at each trophic level. Grams or kilograms are thus the unit of measurement used in this type of model. A pyramid of energy shows how energy flows in a one-way path through an ecosystem. Each level stores only 10% of the energy from the previous trophic level. The energy can be measured in kilocalories. Another pyramid is a pyramid of numbers, and these show the head count or the number of organisms that occupy each trophic level. For example, a thousand shrimp might feed 150 perch, which then would feed 68 northern pike, etc. That's all for now. I hope this helped, and as always, happy studying!